Good morning, everybody. As we come together to praise Jesus, we read in Psalm 148, verse 1, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise is in the assembly of the faithful. Let's pray. Father, you're here, here in this place, here permeating my very spirit, here filling us to the brim, and we praise you. Lord, your shepherding love surrounds us and protects us, and we praise you. Even in painful times, we feel the blessings of your presence, and we praise you. Even when we cry out and you seem absent, still we will trust you and we will praise you. And as we have trusted, we have found that that trust has never been in vain. So we pray that you would be with us as we gather together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read from the book of Exodus, chapter 13. Sorry, chapter 12, I should say reading verse 1 to verse 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is, is to be for you the first month, the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbour having taken into account the number of people that there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect. Then you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people in the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the, ro the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and the bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or, or cooked in water, but roasted over a fire, head, legs and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked in your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff on your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on the gods of Israel, Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate, for as generations to come, you will celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. This is God's word for you today. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 to 13 we read this for the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart nothing in all creation is hidden from god's sight. everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Let's pray. Lord, sometimes we can fool people. We can hide and cover up the things that are shameful to us, that we tend to lock away in our innermost soul. But the reality is we cannot hide anything from you. You see through the facade of who we are or who we pretend to be, and you find us as we truly are. And in a strange way that is very liberating for it means we can be honest with you. No games, no hidden secrets, no cover-ups, no masks. We can be genuinely who we are. Not that every aspect of our way is, is pleasing to you, far from it. But in spite of the trail of offence to you, 
your love for us is still as strong as if we had never sinned. And so we ask that through the sacrifice of your son Jesus that the things that bring us shame when we think about them, the things that have offended you, would be taken away. Not only taken away, but that you would withdraw any temptation to, to be taken into sin, sinful actions that we've done before. Thank you for the power of your love. Thank you that your very nature is love. And we thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, we praise you. We praise you for your, your knowledge of us, your pure and true knowledge of us. But we thank you too for your grace, which forgives sometimes things we cannot forgive in our own selves. Praise you and praise you again. Amen. I now call on Johnson to come and bring us the word. Thank you, Russell, for the prayers and reading of the word of God. Good morning to you all. Good morning. We want to, I just want to thank you for listening to the message of God and just giving your time to what God is saying this morning. My theme today is a blood that passes over. A blood that passes over. Especially if you read, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the blood shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land. That is Exodus 12, verse 13. In our lesson, the Lord gives precise instruction to Moses and Aaron on the content and preparation of the Passover meal. The blood of a lamb with no defects on the door frames of their houses would be the sign of God to pass over them and not strike them down with their Egyptian oppressors. God's wrath, the blood is a symbol of innocence, purity, and offering to the Lord. So this feast of Passover would continue as an annual holiday in honor of the night that the Lord passed over the homes of the Israelites and spared their lives. It would signify a time of preparation for the fulfillment of God's promises. It would also be a time of remembrance of how God delivered the Hebrews from the Egyptians and thus allowed them to escape the bitterness of slavery and haunting memories of formerly oppressed people. Just as the blood of the innocent lamb was shed as a sacrifice and a substitute for the sins and infirmities of the Israelite community, Christ today is our Paschal Lamb, our Lamb of God, our unblemished Savior who sacrificed his life for the salvation of souls and the remission of sins. Christ's blood is offered for the sins of all people. His blood passes over all our past wrongs, infirmities, and imperfections. So the perfect lamb is offered as a sacrifice for God's people. And it is his blood that saves as a source of redemption, power, hope, and liberation, and love for the faith community. So the holy lamb of God is offered as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. His blood is a symbol of redemption for a people enslaved by sin. There are three primary realities that God passed over to redeem and save the Israelites from Egypt, which have important implications in Christ's blood passing us from the sins of our present age. The Israelites were not saved because they were the seed of Abraham. If the Egyptians had obeyed God's command, they too would have been saved. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No one was saved because he was doing the best he could, or because he was honest, or because he was a good person. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's what God is saying. They were not saved because they went through the ceremony of circumcision, or because they belonged to some church. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So the death angel was not making a survey of the neighborhood. 
They were not to open a window and tell the death angel how good they were and how much charity work they've done. Any man would put his neck out of a window that night would have died. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So nothing needed to be added. Who was saved that night? Those who believed God. Those who had sprinkled the blood upon their doorposts and trusted it in it. Although I do not understand it completely, I believe what God says. He tells me that the shed blood of Christ will save me and nothing else will. God said that when he saw the blood, you will pass over them, that home. So the blood was not some mystic or superstitious sign. A great principle runs all the way through the word of God, that without shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. Up until Christ came, it was a lamb. Then Jesus was the lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. In John 1 verse 29. If we receive Christ, we are saved from the judgment that we deserve as sinners. Now on that night in Egypt, there was the death of the firstborn in every home that was not protected by the blood. The application of the blood on the doorpost and the lintels of the home was an indication of faith. You see, that answers to the appropriation of a personal faith in Christ. So the blood of the Lamb passes over our condemnation as sinners. Our poor conspirators in our own enslavement. We have been judged to be eternally branded and condemned for our sins. It is not far-fetched to believe that men of the Israelites may have been conformed to their own captivity due to lack of faith in the presence of fear. So the sin of slavery is not only visited upon the enslavers for their terror and brutality, but imposed upon the enslaved who through lack of faith and trust in God compare with their own bondage. There were those who committed sin and errors by agreeing with their captors by accepting with a system of slavery and oppressing that would bring long-term condemnation for the oppressed. While the plague was inflicted upon the Egyptians for their raw enslavement process, eternal condemnation and perpetual penalty hang over the heads of the Israelites for their lack of faith and for their disobedience that instigated their bondage. God could have easily allowed the judgment of eternal penalty and condemnation to reign. But instead, God allowed the blood of the Lamb to become a symbol of God's passing over their past errors and sins. And so it is with Christ, our Lamb of God, who passes over the sins of disobedience, our own involvement with the slavery of sin. It is the blood of Christ that passes over our sin, that leaves the eternal condemnation and penalty of death, that leaves that warrants wages of sin. It is the blood of Christ, our unblamed Pascal lamb, whose sacrifice and blood became the source of atonement with his people. So the blood of Christ provides a way out of the eternal penalty, reserved for the uncontrite and the unrepentant, who revel in the slavery of sin and bask in the after effects. So the blood of the lamb therefore passes over our eternal condemnation by spiritual exoneration. So the blood of the Lamb passes over our persecution as sinners. God could have easily chosen to continue the persecution of Egypt. God could have easily continued his wrath and rage instead of showing grace and mercy. That God would allow the homes of the Israelites to be passed over as a sign of God's favor and love instead of his anger. So that God would send us his holy son instead of perpetuating a much deserved persecution is a sign of God's continuing favor and love. The Israelites were persecuted by their captors and enemies. As Christians, we are persecuted for and by our own sins. The blood of Christ provides a way out of the persecution, a way of redemption and salvation amid the calamities of our condition. By allowing sin to take residence in our minds, hearts and souls, and by giving sin legal rights we give sin a dominion and providence which forms the conditions for our continued persecution and its estrangement from God. We are persecuted by our sin. Our sin is a sign of an ongoing persecution by the adversaries of God. So we pursue our own persecution through our agreement with sin. Our persecution can therefore become self-inflicted, self-generated, and self-perpetuated. 
Christ, our Lamb of God, was offered up as a way out of, of the persecution, a way out of the damnation, oppressed, and subjugation that sin has created. So our lives no longer need sin stratification or sponsorship, for we have been given a way out of fury, friends, and sadness of sin's devastation. We no longer have to run to sin, take refuge in sin, live for sin, or die for sin. Why? Because Christ's blood has passed over. We no longer have to become spiritual refugees or a persecution that is eternal. There is a way out of sin, a way into Christ. The way into Christ is the way out of sin. It is a road less traveled, a road that leads to two directions with two destinations. No longer refugees of persecution. The blood of the lamb wipes clean the slate of persecution. That is sin engraves upon the human heart. So the Israelites no longer had to experience a persecution that came with their own condemnation and that of their enemies. Christians no longer have to experience eternal persecution due to the reign and terror of sin in their lives. Sin that is self-directed and self-inflicted no longer warrants our living as eternally persecuted because the blood of the lamb wipes clean the ledge of sin. This does not mean that we are no longer sinners. It only means that the memory of the sin recorded in collective consciousness of the community and its individuals does not rationalize or justify the continued persecution of the redeemed people of God. It also means that sin does not have ultimate dominion, leadership, and authority in our lives so as to do domesticate or continue our continued estrangement from God. So this persecution cannot be warranted from self-inflicted sins nor can it be justified by the sins others inflicted upon us or those we inflict upon them. There is a way out. The blood of the lamp passes over our eternal persecution and redeems us for his glory by giving us an opportunity to begin a new life in Christ. Finally, the blood of the lamb passes over our persecution as sinners. The judgment of condemnation leads to persecution and prosecution for our sins. Prosecution leads to execution and death. Without Christ, the blood that passes over, we are eternally doomed to die and redeemed deaths from the wages of sin. The Israelites could not be prosecuted in the course of Egypt because the blood of the lamb had caused God to pass them over. Now they would not undergo a death sentence. Now they would not be enshrouded in a great cloud of unknowing. They knew God had forgiven them. So they knew that the sentence had been stayed and acquittal had come. No longer would the jury be out. No longer would the jury be hung. No longer would their progress towards freedom be overshadowed by their liberation from Egypt. God's eternal law prevailed over men's final law. Divine law and judgment would supersede and eclipse men's judgment and pronouncement of death. They would no longer be prosecuted by the enemies because the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice of the lamb, has wiped clean the ledger of death. And so it is with Christ. No longer need we be prosecuted in the eternal cause of damnation and judgment. No longer must we be subject to the humiliation of arrest, incarceration, and punishment in the cause of of evil. If the devil is our adversary, Christ our ally and might counselor. If evil is our adversary, Christ is our advocate. If prosecution is our sentence, salvation is our Supreme Court appeal. The ban has been lifted. The judgment has been rendered not guilty by the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ. Not guilty by reason of repentance, redemption and remission of sin. The blood has passed over our eternal prosecution in the cause of the devil. God help us. We are people of the blood, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. When I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood, I will pass over. Brothers and sisters, it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we have salvation. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we have got our own salvation. May we believe 
in Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, who came to his own so that he dies for you and me. He died for you and me. You and me are the recipient of the blood of Jesus Christ. May the God help, may God help you this morning as you continue to hear the word of God to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We just want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for the love you have. That you send your own son, your beloved son, to die for me and my fellow brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father, for such a wonderful love. No person would have died for me. No one, but only you. Only you, Father. I just want to thank you that I am what I am today. I am a person. Being regarded as a person and not a nobody because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bless every one of us. In your name I pray. Amen. I will call Russell to come and do the Holy Communion service. Thank you. Welcome to this time of Holy Communion as we share, separated by distance, but certainly not separated in spirit. Let us come and gather to share in that time when Jesus took his disciples and taught them about what was to happen to him. Here we go. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Let us pray. The Lord is with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you for your presence in our midst as we gather in praise and thanksgiving. We praise you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks for you, for your great glory, O Lord God, Heavenly King, God of the Father Almighty. In Luke chapter 22, verse 19 and 20, we read this. He took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Let's pray. Meet us, Heavenly Father, in this meal, that we might be restored to right relationship with you, Join us together as, as the body of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Keep us wide-eyed for the day of your coming, that we may know your salvation. Shine through us, light of the world. Send the flame of your Spirit upon us, and on these gifts of bread and cup, transform us into a people of hope, love and justice to the world. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. To you we pray, source of light and life through Jesus Christ, the light of the world, in the light of your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lamb was broken up and divided on that Thanksgiving night. We take the bread and we break it up. Jesus gave it to his disciples that the pieces may be one as he makes us one in him. And as the blood was a sign of the passing over and the salvation of the people as they shared in that exodus, 
or shared prior to that exodus, we take the cup. The cup that is a symbol of the blood shed by Jesus Christ, that is the life poured out of him, so too, through him, life has been poured into us, new life. These are his gifts for you who are his people. I invite you to take some time to share in your homes in the blood and the body of Christ as represented in the bread and the wine. Let's pray. Lord, as we take these elements and have taken them, may we be taken by who you are. Lord, we say we take communion. We pray this morning that communion will take us, take us into the realm of understanding what a truly incredible act you gave to us to bring our salvation. Cleanse our hearts, give us an appreciation of what has happened in your death and your resurrection. And as we pray, may we represent that death and resurrection to those around us, that may, may, they may see the risen Christ in us and be touched to accept the risen Christ in them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm sure that you will... Um, I want to remind you of your offering and uh, as you give in your own way, maybe through uh, a bank deposit, maybe through uh, a monetary giving, as you give your gifts, let's pray a blessing over what you have given, not just in a weekly offering, but also in what you've given this week in your time to people and the, um, the gifts of love you've given to those around you. So let's pray. Lord God, everything we have is yours. And what you've given us is not just the gifts and the um, abundant fruits of our labour, but you've also given us a responsibility to care for what is around us. And so, Lord, what you've given us online, we pray that we would use to your glory. We pray you would bless this offering as it represents our offering to you of ourselves. Take us and use us to your glory and to your pleasure. And now may the grace, mercy and peace of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen.